I wanted to say a word about meteor showers. We've talked about just stray meteors hitting the Earth. Uh, but every now and then you will see a calendar that says a certain meteor shower happens on a particular night. And so I want to talk about that. What's a meteor shower? Well, it turns out that, that most of what we've talked about up to this point have been just stray meteors, uh, what we call sporadic meteors, and they just come from whatever direction the sky, run into the earth, fall to the ground, or, or don't, or burn up. Um, but every now and then you get a whole bunch of them that are moving together. So you have a whole bunch of meteoroids moving in sort of a swarm. When pass, Earth passes through such a swarm, it looks like there's a whole bunch of meteors originating in one part of the sky, uh, coming away from one constellation, for example. And so we call that a meteor shower. Now, the layman's idea of a meteor shower is like a rain shower. You go out there and there's like meteors all over the place. No, your typical meteor shower is really just a handful of meteors per hour coming from a particular constellation. Your average meteor shower is about five or six meteors per hour, so about one every 10 minutes or less, and uh, they just happen to come from a particular constellation. I've seen some meteor showers that are very sparse, they're just two or three an hour coming from one constellation. Now, some really active meteor showers are much more active than that, uh, better than one a minute. So uh, one every 30, 45 seconds or so coming from a particular constellation. All right, so let's say a little bit about meteor showers. No one really actually even acknowledged meteor showers until uh, the 1800s. So November 13th, uh, 1833. Okay, well, it really was not a cold and stormy night, though that would have been actually a good way of starting the story. It was warm and clear, but uh, what happened was that a um, little bit after midnight, all of a sudden, uh, people woke up because animals started getting agitated, making noises, and there were flashing lights outside, and of course, before you had fire trucks and ambulances and and so forth with flashing lights is 1800s. Uh, people looked outside and and were amazed by what they see it saw. You know, it, it was uh, like the end of the. Uh, so people, uh, you know, this is a a, a a graphic what people said they saw, and they said it looked like actually it was raining stars. And the whole sky was lit up, and 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 as often happens when when people think it's the end of the world, a whole bunch committed suicide. I, I again, I'm guessing that's to get to the front of the line so they don't have to stand stand and wait. But anyway, um, I, I don't know. Uh, uh, but anyway, uh, what happened was that that uh, th this was a huge event. Uh, this is not just a meteor shower. This is what we call a meteor storm. Estimates are that there was a better than a meteor a second occurring, so more than one, more than one meteor per second, uh, several meteors per second, in fact. And so th this really caught people's attention. And um, what happened was that you know scientists started investigating this because so many people saw it that there was no way of just writing it off as you know just one person saw something weird and and didn't know what they were seeing. Uh, so they decided to investigate it, and uh, they weren't really sure what was going on. Remember, in the early 1800s, they had not yet even realized that meteors had anything to do with astronomy. They thought they were some kind of atmospheric effect. It was only just a few years before this that uh, um, Biot had realized that meteorites occurred. You know, rocks fell from the sky. So that was just a few years earlier. And uh, his findings weren't all that well accept, accepted in the United States uh, across the Atlantic. And so they weren't really sure what was going on. Uh, a group of scientists uh, uh, actually decided that what happened was it was an atmospheric effect. Uh, it, they had a cold f spell. The, the, the uh, plants froze. Then a warm front uh, came up in the south, brought tropical electricity with it, which ignited gases given off by the decaying vegetation and made the sky flash like that. Uh, that was the co that standard explanation uh, uh, from uh, some some Harvard professor. On the other hand, there was a Yale professor that said, "No, I don't think so." 
Okay. Dennis and Olmstead said, no, he, 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 that doesn't seem to make sense to him. You know, first of all, he couldn't see, figure out how, you know, the storm could blow electricity up here because uh, he'd been working with uh, electricity himself and said that doesn't seem to work. Uh, then he looked at it and said, well, the other thing is he noticed that the uh, event happened over a period of time. And so for about 30 minutes or so, it was like this, this huge event. And, uh, but it was still pretty active for hours. And that all the, the, the um, meteors in the sky looked like they were coming from one constellation. And rather than that, you know, that spot in the sky drifting with the wind, it was actually staying with the constellation as the Earth rotated. So it moved 15 degrees an hour with Earth. That suggested to him this was an extraterrestrial origin. And so he came with the idea that because these things were all shooting away from the constellation Leo, that this was a perspective thing that what was happening was they were all coming from a spot right there, and when they hit the atmosphere to the left, above, right, or below where you're looking, that it made these, these streaks here. Okay, and so that, that was his, his concept. And so he, he thought, well, there must be a swarm of these things flying around the um, solar system. He actually looked back in historical records, and said, no, actually, it appears that this sort of thing had happened before in November, uh, that uh, in, in several previous Novembers, this sort of thing had happened. So they, they confidently waited until the next November, and everybody went out to look, and, well, it was kind of pitiful because they did see a few meteors coming away from the constellation Leo, but nothing like this. It was just, it was just again, about four or five, six an hour. So uh, nothing to this magnitude. And so, again, that led him to believe it was a very tight swarm that just occasionally runs into. All right. So this was a, a major step. Okay. Heinrich Olbers, a uh, uh, German astronomer, in fact, you know, he's also uh, famous for uh, being for part of the Celestial Police, searching for asteroids. We talked about that. And then Hubert Newton also was, was one of the ones searching for asteroids, um, another one of the uh, Celestial Police. And they started doing calculations, and they realized that if you go back and look, that it's about every 33 years that somebody somewhere on Earth records this big event. It wasn't always in the same part of the world. It was, again, a fairly short period of time. So you, know, you had to be in the night side of the Earth. And in fact, it turned out there was almost always some time after midnight and before dawn that this happened. And so you had to be like, you know, only a little piece of the Earth, like somewhere around, you know, 12, 13 percent of the planet actually got a good view each time. Uh, but this was about a 33 year cycle, suggesting that there was an orbit, you know, around the sun that took about 33 years that was associated with the swarm. OK, and so the swarm is going around every 33 years. OK, little swarm. Well, it turns out that not very long afterwards, they started noticing that there was also some meteors that happened every August, middle of August. And it was every August. So that would suggest the swarm has now spread out for that particular event all around the sun. And so every time Earth passes through that, that swarm, you get a meteor shower. Okay, whereas the, the one here in November was a very tight little swarm, and so that swarm came by about every 33 years, and if Earth was passing through at that time, you got a meteor shower. So the meteor showers are uh, 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 named for the radiant. Radiant is the part of the sky where the meteors seem to be coming from. Um, we also talk about the zenithial hourly rate. Uh, so you might read somewhere that you know, a certain meteor shower is like 70 meteors per hour. Well, that's not really how many you would see. That's how many is calculated you would see if the radiant was directly on your zenith, directly overhead. And uh, generally, it's much lower than overhead, so you actually see a far lower number than the ZHR. 
but that does give you at least a way of ranking the different media showers. Most media showers, as I said, are very modest. There's only a few in the course of a year that are really big media showers. And as I'd said before, when we first started talking about meteors, most of these meteors are very, very small meteoroids. Uh, they are sand grain size up to rice grain size. Most of the ones in media showers are very small. They're, they're sand grain size. So the most notable meteor showers, middle of August, this is always a pretty good one. That's called the Perseid meteors because they look like they come from the constellation Perseus. Mid-October is a decent meteor shower uh, called the Orionid meteors. One of the better meteor showers of the year is the Geminid meteors, and the Geminids occur mid-December. And so these mid-December meteors look like they come away from the constellation Gemini. Uh, the quadrated meteors, that, that occurs in very early January, like January 1st or 2nd every year. Arietid meteors and Aquarid meteors and Taurid meteors, these summer meteor showers, they're nice, but they're a little bit wimpy. These are some of the ones that are, are you know, a few an hour. So you might, you might actually regularly see, you know, about 10, 15 an hour, but they're not going to be as active as uh, some of these that are up here. Uh, but some of these are, are a little bit different in they occur in the evenings. Most of these others occur in the pre-dawn hours. Uh, the quadrated meteors and some of these others are, are very tight. Uh, uh, Oriolid meteors you can see over two or three days. Uh, quadrated, it's like six hours. You've got to be on the right side of the earth to see them.